I'll just start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Chris Wright, and I'm Vice President and Chief Technologist at Red Hat. And I'm here to talk really about digital transformation, although I always struggle with that term. Um, but really, it's, it's about what are the trends in the industry, and uh, what are some of the challenges that go along with being writing modern applications and, and developing code to run businesses today. Um, and those, those challenges and then the kind of the technology trends that are helping us address those challenges. So that's my goal here. And just to start off with, um, who here is an OpenShift user? Wow, that's amazing. All right. For, the, for those who aren't looking the direction I'm looking, that was basically everybody. Um, <laughs> and then uh, in terms of development, who, who here is working on development of OpenShift or related underlying uh, technologies? So a significant you know, quarter of the room. So we have a lot of developers and, and users here. So as a, as a user of OpenShift, um, how about if we get a sense of how long you've been using OpenShift? So you've been using it uh, more than a year? More than two years? Six years? <laughs> All right. So uh, a lot of people are, are familiar with the platform and then kind of running back two years and before it starts to thin out, uh, which, is, which makes a lot of sense in terms of where we are in the industry. Um, I'll just carry on. I happen to have a copy of my slides up here because I wasn't. Oh, okay, that's easy. Um, so let's talk about a next generation application, and, and the really the, the the success of a next generation application is going to be its ability to really take advantage of a highly dynamic underlying infrastructure, or or really maybe better put, take advantage of of programming underlying infrastructure to reflect the highly dynamic nature of, of today's computing environment. So you've got large scale uh, numbers of users, you've got users coming in through different interfaces, and uh, you know, we're trying to, to move quickly and as businesses adopt and, and, and create value for our customers while uh, you know, not getting lost in this sea of technology churn. So the, I think there's three things that are really happening today in the industry that are putting us in a very unique position uh, in history. And the first is, if you look at how we've been developing applications, uh, the application architecture, the software architecture that we build our applications from, historically was traditional monolithic applications. So you've got your big behemoth, it's your enterprise uh, Java app or whatever you've been building, and we're all familiar with those. We've struggled with those. Uh, there is some simplicity with a single large code base in terms of how you manage it, and you know it's just one thing to operate. Uh, but it's definitely cumbersome in terms of scaling and making changes to it can be complex. You have brittle systems. Uh, so you saw kind of a, a shift in monolithic to multi-tiered applications for scaling. And today, the, the, the buzzword du jour is microservices. And I think the interesting thing about microservices is really the notion of doing one thing and doing it well. You hear the term bounded context or whatever, but it really harkens back to the original days of Unix. And it allows focus and separation of concerns. So you can really focus on just solving a single problem. Uh, and at the same time, we have a process of how we've been building and delivering these applications. And historically, we have a waterfall, uh, the tried and true waterfall mechanism, which is, you know, you see varying degrees of success there. And even today, you still see that as, as a big part of, of how we develop software, even in communities. So we have uh, communities like Kubernetes ha still have uh, some releases as opposed to pure kind of every commit goes into production CICD uh, kind of model. And that, that development process has evolved from traditional waterfall into something that's, that's trying to move much more rapidly. And 
It's about enabling developers to move quickly and, and understanding that code changes um, in small incremental steps are more understandable and you can actually mitigate some of the risk associated with change if you're kind of preparing yourself for, for constant change. And then uh, on the sort of platform that you run these applications with on, historically we have uh, vertically integrated stacks. You've got the risk Unix uh, world. And then we moved, moved to something like, like hosted. Uh, so you still have a server environment. That server environment might be x86 and Linux, um, but it's not, you know, it's, it's certainly not prog programmatically accessible. And then today we have, uh, we have cloud. And with the cloud, you actually have APIs that give you the automation that's necessary to create uh, for yourself that dynamic environment that allows you to, to ad adjust and adapt to, to the current needs. Getting closer, never been closer. Uh, and one of the things that ties all these things together is containers. Containers creates a lightweight footprint for running your services, your microservices. Uh, it gives you the ability to uh, build and deliver an image as part of a pipeline. So in your DevOps process, you could have uh, building an image and deploying the image. And leveraging those APIs to, to scale your application um, according to, to your requirements, your, the traffic uh, from the underlying infrastructure that, that you're running your, your containers on. These three things come together, uh, the software architecture, the process that we build our software, the platforms that we run our software on with containers to really give us a unique opportunity uh, in the industry, which is to move faster than we've ever been able to move before, to try to build some common reusable building blocks, and you know, really change the relationship between developers and the IT operation side of the house. Should I be trying to display up here? All right, this is fun. These are the best slides ever. You can't believe the graphics. I spent hours. Um, not true. I suck at graphics. Uh, so the I, I think one of the things to, to reflect on from our from an industry point of view is where have we come from? We've come from a world where the operations teams and the developer teams are really just completely separate worlds and. Uh, while ultimately they may report up through the same CIO, they, uh, that may not even be true. You may have lines of business owning developers that are really independent from the IT operations side of the house. And that's worked. Uh, it's gotten us to where we are now. Uh, it's allowed IT operations teams to, to focus. Uh, it's, it's allowed developers to focus. But it's starting to break down. And we have unprecedented scale in terms of the number of users. We have users with expectations for consistency when they come in across uh, a mobile platform, their laptop, if it's a retailer, maybe even in the store. So you know, this, the world is, is really changing and this separation is not really serving us as well as it, as it ha may have in the past. So um, I, I think the, the point here is, is to be competitive, we need to find a new balance between IT operations, developers, and I think the opportunity here is to think in terms of your application, your application development process, how you deploy an application onto some infrastructure as a, holist a holistic concept. And developers actually have an opportunity to explain somewhat programmatically uh, to the operations side of the house how this application should be, should be deployed, how it should be scaled. Uh, what the dependencies are between the different components in the application. And this new kind of balance across IT and, and, and development is really, I think, going to serve us well. And it's, it's, you're, you're seeing it already with companies doing uh, amazing things with moving quickly and, and scaling rapidly to, uh, to, their users, to their users' needs. So I wanted to talk about some specific concerns or challenges of, of what we need to do to get to that kind of perfected IT ops and, and developer collaboration story. And one of the first challenges is we look at 
infrastructure, historically infrastructure has been there to support the applications and, and today infrastructure ends up being an inhibitor or limiter to how we build and scale our apps. And why, you know, why is that? I think in the past, an infrastructure component like a physical server, you know, to rack and stack a server is a, is a long time consuming activity. So we brought virtualization into the data center, enabled some consolidation, enabled the first steps towards uh, creating something like programmatic interfaces to the infrastructure. But those programmatic interfaces didn't really match 100% some of the needs of developers. So you ended up building an infrastructure platform and still running it under capacity. So the application is ready to consume the APIs accessible to the developer to uh, expand how the, the application is deployed, really a kind of an impedance mismatch. And so you end up with unused capacity, you're underutilizing your infrastructure, you're not meeting the, the customer requirements in terms of how you scale out. And so uh, modern applications really need to, to take advantage of that underlying infrastructure and scale elastically. I mean, you, you hear the, the Pokemon Go example being kind of the, the perfect example for Kubernetes where within a week of utilization, the user base was well beyond their wildest dreams in terms of adoption rates. And so how do you do that if you're either you know, racking and stacking physical gear or, or trying to, to allocate virtual machines and run them as, as long-lived uh, uh, servers really just doesn't fit that, that application development process or that, that deployment, those deployment requirements. And this, again, is a space where containers comes in. So containers really provide that, that lightweight, uh, simple environment for an application. So you think of your Hello World app running in a VM. Uh, that Hello World app is a few lines of code. There's millions of lines of code in that virtual machine supporting those few lines of code to, to run your Hello World app. And while personally I've spent time on uh, technology that allows you to dedupe all the memory consumed across those different virtual machines. Uh, maybe that's not the best use of our time and we could actually uh, really uh, capture just the essence of the application and its direct dependencies and use that as the, as the fundamental building block. I think that containers give us this unique opportunity to express the application requirements to the infrastructure. So we've been trying to do this for years. We've been trying to figure out how do we tell somebody how to run this thing and we're finally building the tools that we need that programmatically allow us to communicate between the developers and the IT ops uh, to express exactly how we think this, this thing should be deployed, this application should be deployed. The other thing that containers do is build some level of consistency. So if you think back in time, we've been trying to figure out how to reuse code for uh, you know, forever. And initially, we had object-oriented programming, this notion that you'd create some class some, and that, that class had the, was perfectly abstracted and it would be reusable uh, inside your application and other applications. And we've had some level of success there. I've, I've worked on projects where we found, uh, you know, using object-oriented programming design, the ability to reuse classes, but usually it breaks down pretty quickly, especially as you start to use it in, in unexpected ways in applications that, are, that weren't your, your primary concern. And um, this, you know, this notion of how can we build reusable building blocks, something like a container image uh, creates some consistency around these, these uh, services within an application. And whether it's something like a specific runtime uh, a Ruby runtime or a Java runtime where you might have some experts who are really focused on optimizing that particular component in the application, uh, in the application stack, or something like Cassandra, which might be challenging to, to figure out how to set up and, and, and manage. Um, we can take those, those experts who understand that and apply their skills to building the images and then reusing the images, and, and especially with configuration, so you've got some kind of a, a stateless image and ability to inject configuration externally, you can adapt those reusable building blocks to your application specific requirements uh, in a way that's, that's really unique in, in time and in, in today's time scale. So again, containers to me are really an opportunity and a container platform is an opportunity to correct 
connect developers to operations teams. And I like to think of OpenShift in some ways as a communication medium between developers and, and operations instead of living in two entirely separate worlds where you throw things over the fence and it's like, good luck, hope, hope you can run this thing. Uh, we're communicating directly and even programmatically uh, through, through a container platform. And I think the other piece here with, with containers is, is microservices are really, uh, to me, they kind of go hand in hand together. Containers uh, give you the opportunity to capture just an immediate service and, and its dependencies. And the, the notion of microservices, whether or not it's new, whether it's just a re-implementation of service-oriented architecture is, is up for debate. We've got beers and sausage at the end of the day. It's great fodder for, for beer talk, but the notion uh, that we're trying to build these aggregate applications out of a collection of services is really powerful and allows us to move quickly. It allows us to run with independent teams uh, at independent life cycles using different even tech underlying technologies, different application stacks. And this is where we're seeing the real, the real power and the value of containers and container app, uh, orchestration. Another struggle is the operations teams, and the operations teams are trying to keep up with this, this, this crazed pace of development. So developers have more and more tools at their fingertips, and the operations teams are just being overwhelmed with how do I manage uh, all these different apps, how do I manage scaling. If you, if you imagine uh, a single monolith, it's relatively easy to start and stop the thing. Now you disaggregate that or decompose that um, application into 100 services, you now have 100 things to start and stop, and they're scaling independently of one another. And if you were doing that with your old techniques, uh, you know, this is, this is a recipe for, for failure. Uh, one mechanism, I, the, and the way I look at that, that analogy of you once had a single application, now you have 100, one of the things that you're creating for yourself is additional complexity. And that complexity is managed through consistency, through standardization, through APIs. So you're starting and stopping things. Your primitives are relatively consistent regardless of the content of, of, a, of a container. And uh, these are the building blocks or the tools that helps our operations teams uh, really work more efficiently. And I think one of the things that's important to look at is where are we deploying modern applications? Modern applications run spanning some combination of some physical infrastructure because you probably still have a backend database or some historical uh, critical to your business transaction processing system that may be running, you know, even on a mainframe. You've got a virtualized part of your infrastructure, uh, whether that's using open source virtualization platform or, or something else. You've got some notion of cloud, which could be internal to your organization, private cloud, and then you've got public cloud, and your applications somehow are spanning all of these things. And these different uh, runtime environments create additional complexity and concerns for, for the operations team, especially when they're thinking compliance, and you know, how do, not, not only how do I run this, but how do I make sure I'm, I'm not violating some critical uh, business requirements. If you think that you can ignore all of that I'm not gonna run it on physical servers. I've left vir virtualization in the dust. Private clouds aren't for me. I'm all in on the public cloud. And we talk to customers who have that, that motivation. Even in that context, most of our customers that we're talking to still look for multiple service providers in the cloud. So even if you're limiting yourself to just a public cloud footprint, you're still spanning multiple different types of, of public clouds. And, from an operations point of view, you're creating challenges for yourself, understanding what are the, um, you know, what's, what's common and, and, and then what's unique across these different runtime environments. So I would assert that that complexity of all these different runtime environments is here to stay, whether it's just multi-cloud, uh, multi-public cloud, or whether it's across the, all the different footprints, physical, virtual, private, public, that complexity is real. And one of the things that helps you with that, with, uh, manage that, is standardization, having a common platform. And, and from my perspective, I say that common platform is Linux. And Linux is 
you know, try, tried and true, we're familiar with it, we understand it, we have many applications that run on Linux, and I think the you know, enthusiasm that I see around container platforms is we've found a way to stretch Linux from a single server world that's creating some kind of an abstraction between your physical infrastructure and your application so that you could have your Dell, HP, uh, IBM, whatever x86 hardware underneath, and we got away from that vertically integrated risk Unix world. We've taken that abstraction and that concept, and we're stretching it across a data center. We're stretching it potentially across multiple data centers, public and private. And it's the you know the core abstraction is Linux. The applications are running on top of Linux, and they're being managed through some uh, container application or container orchestration platform. So I think it's really important to not forget that Linux is a critical part of this story. So the third piece is, is scaling the development, uh, the developers in your organization. So the pace of development is increasing. Uh, you, you're potentially adding developers to, to your organization. And you know, how, do you, how do you really scale effectively? Uh, especially in a world where you're potentially creating multiple teams solving similar problems. So as you decompose your application into a bunch of services uh, and you've got the kind of proverbial two pizza teams, there's probably going to be some overlap of functionality across these teams. And uh, ultimately, if you look at what we're building, we're building applications maybe in a different way, but following some really consistent um, patterns that we've that we have a lot of experience with so there's services in your application the services are connected through uh, messaging you've got some kind of um, maybe analytics component to your application you've got some clustering component to your application uh, maybe some batch processing these are all things that we've we've got a lot of experience with in the industry and the developers consumption of these different portions of an application uh, is potentially getting in the way. So the developer really just wants to focus on writing code and not necessarily understanding the details of how do I set up the messaging infrastructure uh, or how do I set up clustering. I think clustering is an interesting example. We, we've, we've talked about this one before in the context of OpenShift and uh, if you look and those multiple public private virtualization type of footprints for where we could run our applications. Something like JGroups, which is a uh, primitive that could be used in something like InfiniSpan, you know, distributed key value store, clustering is at the core. That clustering historically required multicast, and multicast may or may not be available in something like a public cloud. As a developer, needing to understand the differences of where multicast is available and where it's not, that's going to just slow you down. It's an, it's an impediment to your daily activities. Um, having an operations team that really understands these different environments and understands when you might need to do something like uh, an OpenShift ping protocol for, for J groups as opposed to the multicast uh, clustering solution or, or just using DNS registration to register component, uh, different service components that are currently available, these things are real different technology choices that are important on each of the different platforms that you run on that we're trying to sweep under the, under the rug so that developers aren't faced with trying to understand the low level details and can, can really focus on building the application. And to me, this is where the platform uh, OpenShift really plays a prominent, a prominent role and it's helping abstract away the underlying implementations on these different environments from what the developer is doing, which is really writing code and, and pushing and deploying. And so giving developers access to uh, easy to consume interfaces and allowing area experts to focus on their area of responsibility, I think is what is helping us all move faster and it's what helps scale your development team. So you've got a few area experts that can uh, be used in a consultative manner across many development teams. Yeah. So I think the, the summary here is 
we're here, we're here at OpenShift Commons. Um, the summary to me is that the, the foundation for what I would call continuous innovation is this new platform, and it's a combination of Linux and containers and container orchestration. And uh, in our world, that looks like um, OpenShift. It's Kubernetes and, and Docker containers in the core. It's exposing Linux as a, as a runtime environment for applications. It's Linux at the bottom of the stack for operations teams. And it's creating this communication mechanism and this programmatic way that developers can inform the operations teams what their application deployment needs to look like, how the operations teams can, can kind of uh, deploy, help manage that, that infrastructure, and allowing area experts to focus on their uh, ability to, to really improve efficiency overall for, for developers and, and IT ops. And I think that's it. I have a few other slides here, but considering we're going slowly and, and you can't see them, uh, I'll stop there. Thank you.